Hello and welcome to another edition of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me, Mr. Barton. Now, it is no secret that I love a really good, engaging, numeracy-based starter to a lesson, especially for Year 7 and 8 students. Look, if they don't have the numeracy sorted, and by numeracy I'm talking times tables, addition, subtraction, and so on, the rest of mathematics is going to be a bit of a nightmare. And there's loads of wonderful stuff out there. I'm loving Numeracy Ninjas, Timetable Rockstars, and some of the wonderful resources that we've, uh, I've reviewed on TES over the last kind of five or six years as part of this resource of the week. But here is another to add to the collection. Place number, uh, sorry, place value and number properties, which has been uploaded by Bodmans. Um, and it consists of a, an Excel spreadsheet and a PDF. And I'm just going to show you them now. So the Excel spreadsheet looks like this. I'm gonna to have to move my stupid head out of the way so you can get it. So you get a four digit number and uh, lovelyly uh, um, set up with macros in Excel so that when you do that, it generates your new numbers and so on. Or you can have three numbers and so on and it works really smoothly like that. So let's imagine um, it's the start of a lesson and you have generated um, some new numbers and you've got that six, three, four, two. Well, then you can ask your students a series of questions and they're kindly provided on the PDF. So the idea is the kids write down uh, the four numbers there and then they fill that out. What's the biggest number, smallest number, smallest odd number and so on. Biggest even number. And then we get some really interesting ones. What about um, use the digits only once to make the biggest addition, make the smallest addition, the difference between the biggest and smallest two numbers and so on. And look at all the different skills you're bringing into play there. Place values covered, um, mental addition and so on. Um, Place value in a slightly different way, getting it closer to a different number and, and so on. Fantastic quick fire starter, easy to mark. You can go through those on the board. Kids get a score out of 10 and so on. Dead easy to build into your lesson. But, and here's the big thing, I think there's even more potential for this. So I spent five minutes or so just thinking of additional questions that, that I may ask based on if you had a four digit number. And look, you'll come up with miles better ones than me, but these were some of the ones I came up with. So. What's the largest factor of three that you can make with those four numbers? What's the largest two digit prime? What's the smallest multiple of 12? And then I'll, <laughs> I mean, it sounded dead cocky because I came up with this myself, but I love this one. What's the biggest total you can make? And that's just a two digit subtraction. Two digit, take another two digits. What's the biggest total? That'll get them thinking. And then what about that? I don't think that's so easy as well. What's the biggest total you can make multiple, multiplying a single digit number by the remaining three digits? So slightly more uh, complex questions, slightly more towards the uh, developing a little bit of problem solving and discussion, but all based off this same idea of starting with three numbers and I just think if you build this into your regular routine and I know you'll all have kind of regular starters and stuff that you do but if you can squeeze this in once a week it only takes five minutes you don't have to do um, three three versions of it each time you can just do um, you can just stick that out uh, stick that in the books and you can just do round one one week round two the next week and so on but I just think this is worthy of inclusion once a week in year seven and eight lessons get the kids discussing it's an engaging way you can bring the competition element um, in there if you want a bit and here's the beauty of it every time you teach a new number based topic in year seven you can probably start to bring in um, different aspects of uh, this adding extra questions so i mean again just off the top of my head once rounding comes into play why not why not start to bring in rounding can you get me a number that rounds to three three thousand two hundred and so on or the closest number that rounds to that all that kind of thing every time you do a different topic a number based topic can you think of an extra question to add and then this this ends up being the resource that just keeps on giving right you start off with an excel spreadsheet you start off with 10 questions we're already if you include mine we're already at an extra five questions on there soon we could be 20 25 questions and so on you can pick and choose your questions as, as and when you need so a wonderful versatile resource that i I think can really help students consolidate some of those key numeracy issues. So I'm a huge, huge fan of that. If you like it, hop back onto the uh, TES website, leave a little review and a little word of thanks for uh, the author, and I shall return with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.